welcome to my channel. My name is Lisa Allistway, and on this channel, you will find a variety of inspirational and informational videos. So if that sounds good to you and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. My guest today is a former guest, Miriam Yance, who is an accredited healer, clairvoyant, transformational coach, inspirational speaker, and a visual artist. Midium inspires and guides others to discover who they are by recognizing their soul's intention. I will be linking her website and her YouTube channel down below in the description box, as well as our former talk. Welcome, Midium. Thank you, Lisa. It's great to see you again, and it's really a joy to be able to share our thoughts Yes, yes, I'm so excited to have you back. Um, as I mentioned in the introduction, I had found you during the pandemic when we were on lockdown, when we were social distancing, when we were working from home, and I was like, who is this lady? And I reached out to you and we put together a really good interview, which is in the description box if you guys wanna check that out. And I thought it would be a great idea to bring you back since we're kind of coming out of this pandemic and just to kind of get some of your thoughts on what you've seen and observed during these last two years. That's a lot. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, and, and like we uh, discussed earlier, it's, it's whether it's a pandemic, that's still the question. Yes. The definition of a pandemic doesn't really fit um, uh, the events that took place. But, but I do like the fact that I, see it as a transformation and the transformation has been my interest over the years and i feel like people are almost like pushed through the bottleneck into a transformation by i wouldn't say the pandemic but i would say the restrictions and the isolation and um, the rules that made them change their attitudes towards certain people things organizations uh, and so on so um, I like to see it as a positive transformation when you have the courage to go for it. And if you don't have the courage, then you get into, well, we would say it's either fear or it's courage. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I've noticed a lot uh, in the last year, two years. And of course, I had to face myself as well. I mean, it's, it's an ongoing adventure to get to know yourself better. And these circumstances really force one to get to know one better, to really realize where you are about. And um, I've done a lot of sessions with people who panicked because of the loss of certain, well, let's say certainties. Um, and they didn't know what to do next when they were really highly gifted, talented, so many abilities to connect with others and get work done and they didn't see it mm -hmm. they only saw the loss of what was happening the job was done they 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 couldn't get along with with uh, colleagues anymore they couldn't meet that is a thing if you cannot meet other people then you kind of dry up which is a very unhealthy thing um i i mean this symbolically <laughs> Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> but it's it's uh, very important to be able to share your thoughts and experience with others and then feel not judged mm -hmm. uh, and feel free to express yourself. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you there's no direct mirroring of who you are. Mm -hmm. And in the, the bigger, if you look at the bigger picture, it's absolutely this whole circumstance that we're in with, well, Right now, people in Davos uh, are discussing what they want to do with the rest of the world uh, after they meet. I think this is quite a weird situation. We're waiting what they decide upon, but we can start deciding upon ourselves what we want to do. And it is a challenging situation because we are entering an area we are, where we have never been before. Mm -hmm. So if you would like, I can go into what is changing within us, whether we know it or not. 
Yes, most oh, definitely. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, because I call it a transformation instead of a, a pandemic. Mm -hmm. I, I never used that word, to be honest. No, I didn't. No. Uh, <laughs> and, um, but of course, you know, the, the nice thing is I call myself a transformational coach. I'm almost about to give myself another name because the transformation is done. Mm. Because of, who? Huh? Really? Yes. <laughs> um, the transformation energy-wise within us is done. There are people, there are pioneers, rebels that go first, and then there are uh, people that follow, and there will be people that will never transform because their sole intent is not to transform. Mm -hmm. I respect that, but that's not the people that I work with. Mm -hmm. And they don't find me either on my YouTube channel or whatever. They don't find me. Yeah. The people that are looking for me will find me. And so will I find people that have something to tell me right now in this process where I'm in. But I say, I dare to state that the transformation already took place because we are um, changed in such a way, um, spiritually and physically, that we cannot set but new standards. Mm -hmm. We have to start discerning what belongs to our new us. So you transformed already without you knowing it in your dreams, in your moments of silence, in your walks in nature, and things happen within your body because it reflects what's happening on a larger scale as well. Mm -hmm. Let's say that your frequency is higher. So you're, and that's a funny thing because you can measure the frequency of one's body. There are all kinds of alternative healing systems that higher your frequency or balance your frequency. And um, there, you can find a lot of information on that in on the internet. But this is you becoming a higher frequency, meaning your aura is different than it was before. You develop new chakras, which can hold the higher frequencies. And that makes you an antenna for different kinds of uh, frequencies as well. So you will kind of walk through the crowd and say, hey, I see there's someone who has the same antenna as me. Ah, I need to connect or I like to connect or I'm open for connection. Mm. And that's only possible there we get to a, a, a risk of only striving to higher your frequency that you lose your grounding so it's very important to stay grounded get your feet on the floor on the earth and really get into your lower body as well because we can think and fantasize about a beautiful new world but then that's not a trap is the 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 love and light is not going to save this world <laughs> it's a beautiful part of where we are and and it helps mm -hmm. but the main thing is that you ground and know who you are and know your qualities and your gifts and work with that in cooperation with people who dare to be honest with you and courageous enough to see the change as an adventure and not as a threat. So ground and then realize that your frequency is higher, which gives you all the gifts of creativity, of connecting, of a different kind of empathy and a different kind of mediumship. And I'm talking, working with your guides, which is a kind of, of your higher self as well. Mm -hmm. I, I can talk an hour about only that, but <laughs> we'll, <laughs> save, we'll save that. But it's, it's uh, definitely something that is happening right now because I hear from a lot of people, I have strange dreams. I see things. I've never seen them before. I photograph orbs. I do so. And, and it's beautiful to connect and then really dare to discern what is true in it and what is fantasy. Mm. Uh, but the thing that you can say, okay, that benefits us after these difficult times that we're still in a very difficult time. I mean, it's mm -hmm. pressure all over. Uh, and of course, one country has a different circumstance than another. Uh, I live in the Netherlands. Uh, right now, I'm not that proud of being Dutch. <laughs> uh, 
but it's my roots and I, I have to go with it because I'm planted here for a reason. So um, I'm even living in farmer land now. So I'm surrounded by farmers, which is quite an adventure for me because I used to live in Amsterdam. This is new, uh, but it's beautiful because I learn about a different way of um, cooperation um, um, among people. Um, and that's, well, it's, it's an overwhelming experience, to be honest, mm -hmm. to be outside also, know these people, see the skies and, and uh, feel the sunshine and I'm out there mm. instead of uh, walking the big city of Amsterdam, which has its charms as well. Yes. Where was I? Can... I? <laughs> no worries. We were talking about, um, you know, looking at versus saying, you know, this was a pandemic we went through or we're currently still in, looking at it more of as a transformation. Um, and we know some people, you know, the world's changed. I think that's why you said we have transformed because the world has changed and how we maybe operate in business, how people have, we've saw the lack of empathy that's taken place in the last couple of years. That was really highlighted um yes. so yeah so there's a lot of um transformations and i think that that is a good way to look at it versus just talking in pandemic terms because that's very sterile cold but like seeing it as an opportunity of transformation yeah and there's there's also you know this is very much about self-awareness so it's the person who looks at the circumstances the the, the individual person that looks at his relations his job his his future plans things like that and it's not about the transformation that takes place in the companies and the governments because that's a whole different chapter that transformation uh in the end will be in the hands of individuals mm -hmm. and if the individuals don't dare to transform those organizations won't transform but if there are a lot of individuals that do transform and say wait a minute what have we been doing all those years? What's where does my fear come from? Where is my my sense of lack coming from? Why do I need so many securities in the outside world when I lack security in me, certainty in me, trust in me? Then I'm on a different path, and if that's uh, becoming more evident in people then their attitude towards things will change. But it's very much, in, in my opinion, uh, it's, it's the individuals that make the change, not the, the big. Yes, yes. I mean, you will have <laughs> outside forces trying to tell you what to think, what to do, what to say. But I think, you know, as, you know, as a transformational coach, you want people to get in touch with their gut feelings. Yes. You know, something feels off, something feels weird like pay attention to um you know an honest reflection of how it is within yourself yeah and the, and the funny thing is that the circumstances just offer you that I, I'm, I'm sure you heard about people having the flu for weeks or a cold for a really long time mm -hmm. uh, and uh, i studied german new medicine uh, which is not accepted everywhere but it's a beautiful way of looking at the psychological background of a um, physical imbalance. Mm. And I love it because every time someone says, yeah, I had those trouble then and I feel physically unwell uh, for years about, no, 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 I can look into it and say, okay, but what did you think before it happened? What happens and what did you think of it? And the funny thing, I, I have a bruised rib right now. So I'm sitting here, <laughs> no, I'm okay, but it's, uh, and everyone who had one for some time know, knows how painful it is. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's beautiful to realize that every time something like this happens, I immediately go within and say, what happened? Why did it happen? Why did I attract this? And I immediately knew why I attracted a bruised rib. And it's... <laughs> why? I get why you experienced one, but why did you attract one? We, every imbalance we attract. 
to show us that there is something going on in our aura, in our energy field mm. that is out of balance. And if we don't listen to it when it's out there and it comes closer and closer and we still don't listen, it gets into our body and then it gives a signal saying, wait a minute, you didn't listen, now you listen. Mm. Uh, but it goes much faster now than ever before. And that's one of the benefits of the transformation. You do something that's not to your benefit or not healing to you or not uh, nurturing you, then immediately you get a hiccup and say, okay, you want to have, uh, you hurt your knee or get a deaf ear or whatever. There's immediately a consequence. So, and I know that I point, mm -hmm. I point mm -hmm. it out to a lot of people, but then experiencing it myself, like, wait a minute, what did I do? Yeah. Uh, but I realized when you bruise your ribs, you can say, okay, you've got less space within your lungs to breathe. And that is a beautiful analogy to the situation we, we had for the last two years. Mm. You had less space to breathe your own breath. And breath is inspiration, it's, it's freedom, it's nurturing every cell in your body. And with breath, you take in light, love, everything goes in every cell of your body when you allow it. Mm -hmm. And somehow I didn't realize I was letting my space being, um, how do you say, strangled? Um, yeah, confined, uh, smaller. Confined. That's the good word, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the funny thing is that um, it was a, a big guy that just lifted me up for fun, but he he gave me like a really good squeeze and yeah. that bruised my rib. So it was a very gentle, friendly gesture, but he he was of service to me, attracting a bruised rib. Mm. Can you kind of sort of get what yeah. you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, it, you know, it really points out with the breath, you know, a lot of people are reporting um, having, you know, post-traumatic stress, you know, that they're currently experiencing or just being really anxious because they're waiting for the shoe to drop. Like, when is the next pandemic going to happen? Are they going to lock us down again? Are we going to have to go back to social distancing? Um, so there's a lot of stress and anxiety that I know people um, are experiencing uh, can you touch on that? What you know, what you would say to people who are dealing with that? Uh, well, it's absolutely an um, invitation to look at what makes you fearful. What's the basis of your anxiety? Because there's always a base that connects with sometimes even ancestral patterns, mm -hmm. uh, and that happens a lot. So the people that are now um, blown away by, with scare because of the restrictions or the isolation or whatever, very often have um, a background in their family, their ancestral mm -hmm. lines, which touches upon um, the poverty and the pressure and how do you say, um, the limitations in life that they experience in the family. So there might be a war um, being fought by a grand grandfather that still has an effect on everyone who lived after that. Yes. And they come into, okay, oh, I need to go in hiding. I need to prep, mm -hmm. I need to, and it feels like war. And then the history, the, the memory in the cells, in the body cells comes up and said, wait a minute, there we go again. Oh no, because maybe the grandfather died. The grand, 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 grandfather died. Mm -hmm. And those things come up a lot. Mm -hmm. And when I then clear it and bring it back to just the fear of this moment, you can say, okay, fear is always a mental construct. So when you go inside your body and ground yourself and indeed get, get to the place where you trust yourself, then there's no fear anymore. And the funny thing is that we went from, um, like I remember two years ago when we were like, Oh, got to read the news, got to be informed. I need to know what's going on. Yeah. So, you know, they can do whatever they like. I'm going to do my own life. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge step we made. Mm -hmm. And it is so important that we start trusting 
our ability to move away from mainstream media and get to our own media within ourselves. It's gonna make the world difference. And I love watching it and I love watching it in people because every time, you know, you set them free and they say, I've never felt this way before. This is funny. And it's beautiful because they finally get into the now. They get into the silence of now. And then there's nothing else that's that they're able to scare them anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. There are threats mm -hmm. here as well. But I certainly do want to enjoy talking to you today, mm -hmm. being here now, mm -hmm. wearing some orange mm -hmm. and things like that. I mean, I want to enjoy it. And that yes. gives me so much power. Yes. And I love that you pointed out the silence of now. I know with like, you know, the constant news and people trying to get your attention and, and people just disassociating and reading stuff, looking at stuff, like it behooves all of us to put that on mute and be alone in your own thoughts. And some people are not comfortable with their own thoughts, but you have to find a way because that is where you're going to tap into your creativity and your knowledge and, and just like honoring yourself rather than having all this excess noise that's constantly being yammered and hammered at us. It's so true. It's so true. I, um, you know, sometimes I do a meditation with a group. I, I don't like the word meditation so much because it's a little bit connected to the, uh, to the East way of meditating and it's being silent and within oneself. Mm -hmm. And if you do that with a group, mm -hmm. There is such a beautiful energy that comes to the surface within everyone. Mm -hmm. And I did a few rituals here on the land, on the farmland, Re really beautiful. Also uh, connected to what's going on here politically. So we, but not, and it's a beautiful choice for me. It feels really well not to go to a demonstration, but to higher the frequency of where we are and be on the land and work with the land and the nature. Uh, so the trees, the water, the stars, great. But I noticed, because I was curious what's happening. I noticed that the bovis value, which is like the life energy of the land changed after we did a med meditation on it. Mm. So we sat in silence or within or near the fire or um, with full moon in a dark night and it was beautiful because we could allow the higher energies come within us and then share it without words mm -hmm. just by being totally present but then it changed the energy in the earth that was quite a surprise to me too and i, I got proof uh, because there was a little boy that said okay can i join and i he came even was it the next morning? It doesn't matter. Uh, he came to that piece of land where we just did this ritual and he stood on his feet and I said, okay, just concentrate on your feet, feel your feet, touch the earth, feel the earth carry you. And he said, it feels funny over here. So, and he was four or five years old. So he didn't, I didn't tell him anything, mm -hmm. but he noticed that the energy in the earth changed. And uh, I thought that was brilliant, that he was able to discern the difference between that piece of earth and another piece. Mm, that's so interesting. Aren't kids more um, in tune with nature, more in tune with certain vibrations than you would say adults? Uh, that's a um, <laughs> uh, yes, no. <laughs> yes, no, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, there are quite some children now that are being born to support the transformation in adults. Okay. That's for sure. Um, and mm -hmm. there are quite some wise children being born right now that have gifts that you wouldn't believe. But we all have more gifts than we used to have. Mm. Uh, let's say you were creative, you're more creative. If you were good at, at um, 
growing veggies, you're better at growing veggies. When you were mm -hmm. a painter, you're a better painter. If you are an organizer, you're a better organizer. Mm -hmm. It comes with this change. Mm -hmm. And to me, and, and, and I like to get back to the point where you said, okay, no pandemic, uh, but a transformation. If you are able to see this whole pandemic, the thing that played out outside you as a mirror to see what shadows were still present within you that you needed to look at, mm -hmm. then you are at the best point to look at the benefits of this time instead of becoming fearful. Mm -hmm. And when you get fearful, remember someone told you to be fearful. Who told you to be fearful? Who told you to feel anxious? Mm -hmm. There is always this voice in your head that said, oh, you better, better take it, better beware. And I've seen absurd situations. I mean, I, I, I look on YouTube sometimes, there were very funny uh, videos of people that make such a mess of their lives being so scared. Yeah. Um, and maybe it's a good point to to point out the three uh, basic fear uh, there's a fear of losing control a fear of losing power and a fear of being isolated and they have been played big time by the mainstream media mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if i may say so mm -hmm. uh, and if you're not aware of the fact that that's a programming, then you stay fearful and it gets worse. But if you say, hey, wait a minute, I don't want to live my life in fear all the time mm -hmm. because it doesn't bring me anything. Mm -hmm. In the, the ultimate, and it's, it's the beautiful thing, it's in the silence, the dark, in the dark, you become inspired in isolation you become inspired. You have to be quiet within yourself to let this change happen. Mm -hmm. Higher frequency is not, thinking, not something that you can order. It's been given. It's a present. It's a present of the cosmos. It's a present of whatever powers are out there that are supportive. I feel that support, it's almost like on my shoulders all day long, and it's beautiful. They're my friends. Uh, and but it's everywhere. I mean, I'm not talking about some uh, <laughs> <laughs> on my shoulder, but it's it's almost tactile if you allow it to be. And of course, I, I was born with a gift to communicate, uh, but I, it took me a long time to discover that I was a medium and that I could really communicate with them. But they've given such beautiful channeled. Uh, information which I try I will try to share on my telegram uh, channel as well mm -hmm. it they're so forceful and so forward and it's great pep talk <laughs> they really tell people to go for it now mm -hmm. because if we don't do it now and there are certain rules that really restrict our freedom Mm -hmm. that we lose our ability to receive these higher frequencies and live with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, we had talked a little bit beforehand how the pandemic was a once in a lifetime opportunity and people need to look at it as that. Um, I know people made some major changes during the pandemic. They, you know, they were looking at their relationship and were like, you know what, this marriage is over. I'm going to finally have the courage to leave or leave a job or move from a city or um, whatever that change or that calling came because of the pandemic, the transformation that may not have come. Yeah. Oh, that's so true. And, and of course, you can imagine that, there, you know, there have been lots of discussions in families and relationships. And um, one of the things that is very in, in, in important here is, is indeed who's the authority in which organization. Mm. Uh, so uh, they're they're in a relationship, you know. They're people that certainly re suddenly realize, why do I always listen to you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Who's the authority of your life? Is the yeah. question. You know, people are like, wait a minute, it, it's you. You are the authority of your life. Exactly, exactly. 
uh, and it's painful uh, and there have been a lot of tears um, shed as well but that's part of the deal we are speeding up this change to become a really a participant in a society and it can be a different way than we ever thought possible and that's the fear that keeps people from going for it because if one of the basic fears is isolation you go into the dark in your silence and you feel wait a minute why am i hanging on to this marriage or this job or this mm -hmm. house or when it doesn't feel good then you have to live with the consequences but the consequences are that you step into an unknown area so to some it can feel like i'm stepping into the void ah, that's that's a cause of panic but when you allow it to be there without identifying with it then the new you can just occur and that's it, it takes a little bit of courage mm -hmm. but you know what do we have to lose but the world mm -hmm. oh just the world <laughs> Yes, yes. I think that um, it can make some people very uncomfortable if you are going through these changes and transformations because you are mirroring to them and they're like, oh, well, that makes me feel bad because I haven't made the courage to make the change in my own life. So I will resort to drinking or, or addictions or other things versus, you know, really stepping into their their best self. Yes. Uh, and that's the it's. it's every addiction points at a vulnerability in your energy body as well and um you know i love a good glass of wine once in a while as well i, I have to admit <laughs> but i don't mind that much i mean um uh, no that's funny maybe maybe sometimes you can stay away from it for a few months to really uh, center but yeah there's too much going on, so sometimes it, um, I like it's like some might like a cigarette, but if you smoke all day long or drink every day, mm -hmm. uh, and but even like look for spiritual solutions all day long, mm -hmm. none of it will work because it all is a way out of your center. Does that make sense? Yes. So when it, and it all connects to a disturbed chakra. Mm -hmm. So a chakra that is out of balance will make you mm -hmm. step out of yourself, out of your alignment with the cosmos, mm -hmm. out of your alignment with the earth. And then you can have beautiful fantasies about I'm gonna do this. I have, but then the next morning there's no smoke, uh, there's mm -hmm. no uh, joint, there's no alcohol, there's no, and then the world is pretty raw. Um, and there's one that that's reminds me of another very basic thing, the choice. And I think, you know, it's funny, I don't think of it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, uh, the pandemic made everyone feel victimized. Mm -hmm. Well, also victimhood pays a lot of people profited off of being victims. Yes, and it's been like that for years, for ages. But at the same time, this is a wake up call. Do you dare to be uh, your own authority or do you want to stay a victim? Yeah. That choice is probably one of the main choices we have to make. Mm -hmm. There are huge amounts of victims. Yeah. but they've always been there and i do hope that it, the victimizing these groups of people is coming to the surface i i won't say too much about it but everyone who knows knows <laughs> uh, because validating one life above another hmm. is crucial to not go for a responsibility towards others. So people who allow um, still this image of, well, allow others to be their victim, um, they will lack empathy more and more and more. 
-hmm. and this build this new world is going to be built on empathy and intuition and uh, connecting the dots in the bigger picture that's that's it um, for me uh, and i'm looking forward to it Mm -hmm. but i'm also already experiencing it mm. that's why i dare to say we are already transformed we just have to realize it mm -hmm. the doors to other dimensions and other ways of uh, experiencing this life are wide open mm -hmm. yes most definitely i i have to you know focus on the positives and like focus on those types of things because you know, those that are not transforming, those that, you know, lack the empathy, those that, you know, for whatever reason are not doing their soul's work. Um, I can't focus on them. I can't like worry about them. They're on their own path. But if the majority is going more toward this kind of light way of looking at the future, I, I can be very positive then. You know, it's, it's people ask me, Miriam, how, how many people are going to are going to take part in this new world yeah gonna move to another planet or what's gonna happen I said, well I, I i don't answer those kind of questions but i say okay i respect everyone who decides not to come along who doesn't want to go into silence and get to know its own uh, authority i respect that and it will be like that that maybe half of uh, humanity won't be able to see mm. or let's say it might be their sole intent not to to wake up mm -hmm. and i respect that because they show the other half that it's possible to change mm. which i think is a, is a quite a sacrifice as well yes well, when we think about, you know, our, our, our leaders, our political leaders, people who, you know, run companies, corporations, um, you know, and who have, and if, and if they're doing their transformation, you know, that's going to be key because if they're not, then you have people that just reaffirm what they believe, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's, it's coming to a, 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 they put all these, um, how am I going to say that in a few sentences? <laughs> um, this has been building up for ages and ages. And just the fact that we know about mm -hmm. civilizations and cultures that had such a high development of whatever healthcare or energy work or or a political or democratic um, organization said, so it's unbelievable that we lost all that. And I've been brought up as a child also, we are the top of the evolution. No, we're not. <laughs> we lost a lot of knowledge and we've been victimized for ages and ages and ages to step and forced to step away from our inner authority and our source of information. Uh, and that if that's now it's getting under pressure so much, like it has to explode. Mm -hmm. And mm. it's, you know, it's building up to that moment. Yeah, you uh, hear people talk about like, you know, America is collapsing and all great, you know, empires eventually collapse and I mean, I don't know how close we are to that really, but um, that is definitely people's, you know, conversation that they're having, like, you know, we're printing money out of thin air and like, really what value is the dollar and all that type of thing. So, I mean, um, I work with people in the States as well. And it's uh, I, it makes me kind of, uh, I need to travel sick, not homesick, but travel sick. <laughs> I love to travel again, um, but yeah, not now. But that's the, the, one of the things that is also occurring is the changes in uh, our environment. And there's very little attention for it. But the fact that the magnetic field around the earth is changing, thinning, that the earth's crust is moving, that the inner earth is um, I, not moving, but it's, it's, it's streaming in a different direction. There, the solar flares, everything has a huge influence on us because it has all to do with the electric field that we are, that we represent. So 
and there, there's very little talk about that. But that might just have a bigger influence, a bigger effect, shifting effect than we think. So I don't know much about it, but I listen to people and say, whoa, this is big. But I do realize it has an effect on our physical being mm -hmm. and therefore on the way we feel about ourselves. So I think this is interesting. And has an effect on future generations because I think yes. it's real important to how those, you know, genetic predispositions are passed down, whether it's personality or addictions or disease. Yes. Um, you know, there's things that we're doing in current culture that is going to have a huge impact on yes. the, you know, future generations. Yes. And I hope there will be a lot of future generations. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> yes. And hopefully it's positive that we're passing down, you know, a more authentic approach to life and less of the, you know, disassociation, less of the consumerism, less of the materialism and, and, you know, more valuing of your fellow man and woman. Yeah. Well, I, uh, happily I live in, uh, a place here in the Netherlands where I can get a lot of organic food and mm -hmm. people are aware of things and they like to get together to talk about free energy or a different way of growing stuff and um, it also water management and but there are things that are too big for these individuals to have an effect on immediately but still the awareness of the fact that there there's things happening in the air uh, in the land, in the water, those are the things that we have to face uh, together. Uh, but you can only do that when everyone is strong enough and stands in his own shoes firmly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's, um, I think we have an opportunity here to create a new world, or let's say a new awareness of the world Mm -hmm. um, because everything is in the eye of the beholder, also the new world. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah. as I say, history is being made. History is not done. So we mm -hmm. are in the middle of making what our history is going to be. So I think yeah. that that's you know a really good reminder. And I and I love how you're inviting people to really think about you know using this opportunity as transformation. You know. Um, and to kind of not, and maybe, you know, I've got, of course, honor your feelings of stress and anxiety and unknown, but also approach it in a courage way and not in a fear way. Yes, yes. And find at least one person that you can talk to about mm -hmm. your fear, mm -hmm. because that takes half of it away. And they, I see some really absurd uh, behavior in the streets and in and, and some videos and think mm -hmm. how how can this be mm -hmm. so keep thinking for yourself mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, find ways to be creative that's a very important thing because mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter how uh, anything that you know don't sit and wait get mm -hmm. active you know, the, the, the creativity is so important because it's an expression of you. Who are you? You're not yeah. just, you know, the worker bee. You're not just a parent. Those are like labels, roles, so forth. But who are you at your essence? And if you can tap into your creativity, whether it's writing, painting, um, drawing, whatever it might be, that's going to help you really, you know, honor and celebrate yourself. Yeah. And it can be very simple. Also, you find a good way to clean your house in a really fast way. Or, you know, uh, it, it's organizing a dinner mm -hmm. or inviting people the way you like to invite people instead of how everyone else does it. Mm -hmm. Celebrate your birthday in a different way. Travel to something without knowing where you're going to end up. Surprise yourself. Be creative by challenging yourself and, mm -hmm. and see what comes out of it and be honest about how you feel about it. Because if you nurture your sense of creativity, it's, it's so empowering. And mm -hmm. then be silent with it. Be in the dark and the new images, the new realization mm -hmm. will occur mm -hmm. within you because mm -hmm. it is waiting to present itself. That's how I feel it.
Yes, yes. It really wakes up all of your senses where yes. maybe they have been more dull or dumbed down, I would say. Like you want to like reignite them, reignite your senses. And again, going back to the silence and the solitude in those moments to really tap into that. Yeah. But I do think that we are gifted with new senses. And mm. um, what are those so new senses? Well, it's enhancing everything that we have. So if you get creative now, it's it, you you get into a state of flow much easier. Mm. And validating, so really, but I hear it from people say, I see different colors. Um, mm. I, 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 if we have time, yeah, I'll, I'll share one um, story. I was walking with a friend here and she had a cold. And we were walking uh, the fields and she saw uh, clover, purple clover, mm -hmm. um, blossoming purple clover. And she said, oh, look at those colors. It's so shiny. And I looked at her, knew that she had this cold, and I said, you need to eat a few clovers now. Mm. So we picked flowers, she ate them, and within half an hour, the cold that she had for weeks was gone. Wow. Not to return. And it's not, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, advocating um, natural um, health uh, systems, whatever, but it's, it's the, the knowledge is there, it's intuitive. I knew that I saw that she would benefit from those clovers and it worked, but she saw it. And that's an enhanced sense. So people hear much better. They mm -hmm. see different colors, they mm -hmm. see shapes and they see energies mm -hmm. and they feel with their heart immediately what really is close to them or what isn't. Mm. That determines your ability to discern what you need to have close and what you need to let go. And it can be surprising, but yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I like that story. It's, it's such a reminder to, to recognize, you know, I think a lot of people, we talk about being asleep and now they're awake after this transformation, but I think it is just, you know, wow, we're being more, we're recognizing more of the ways of the world and how we interact with the world. Yeah, but it's it's like what you are doing. You're you're you know broadcasting. You're making these videos. You're bringing them up because you had this inner need to do something. Yeah, I don't know. There was a voice that was like, "Hey, you should start a YouTube channel." I don't know where it came from, but it exactly. was planted in my. It was planted in me somewhere. Yeah, but then you picked it up and you acted on it, and mm -hmm. that's so important because you never know where it brings you. I get to meet people like you and talk to you, which is awesome. <laughs> I would have <laughs> asked me two years ago who Miriam Yance was, and I'd be like, I have no idea who is this lady. And it brought me to this. So yes, yes. So that is the other side of it is, you know, actionable steps. You know, yeah. people do need yeah. to step forward and step into it with courage. Cause I obviously had a lot of fear starting a YouTube channel that I had to face and overcome. And, and here I am. Yeah, but you're doing a great job. So oh, thank you. So enjoy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, I, I hope it, you know, inspires others who are, you know, have a seed planted that yeah. they, you know, pay attention to it, recognize why it's coming up for you, you know, um, yep. and then do something about it. Work through the fear that's stopping you. You know, one of the things that helped me overcome my fear because of the transformation is, you know, just death, you know, death was at the forefront of all of this pandemic transformation. I was like, you know, we're all going to die. So why am I, why am I waiting for anything? Why am I letting anything hold me back? We're all going to die. So, I mean, that should be like, just as a great reminder, if something's stopping you, just remember, hey, you're going to die anyway. So you may as well do it. You may as well try. But well, that's, that's a beautiful statement, <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> it's, it's intense, but yes. It's, 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 if I really need to tease uh, people, then I say, okay, are you prepared to die? You know, I can live today in a more intense way, celebrating life much more when I'm prepared to die tomorrow. Yes. I would like to say to some people, I really love you. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they know. So, uh, yes, but if you're prepared to die, uh, it's a, almost a Buddhistic way of looking at it, I think. But then life becomes so much more enjoyable because then it becomes the gift it's not a task it's not homework it's not 
something that's put upon you. Mm -hmm. No, it's in you. You mm -hmm. live your life. You breathe. And then a repression that uh, takes me uh, into a situation where I cause myself to get my rib bruised. So interesting. Immediately, wise lesson. Okay, next one. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and death, I mean, uh, I hope for, no, I, do, I don't hope anything anymore, to, to be honest. I don't like the word hope. Hope um, is empty. Hope is not real. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Hope is something mental outside you. I yeah. trust an outcome. Yeah, yeah. Um, but death, the times that I was confronted with people dying were the most beautiful moments ever. Mm. But if we were aware of the circumstances, and mm -hmm. if you have to die struggling mm -hmm. uh, and not feeling and victimized, then it will cause bad karma for the next mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. Although, okay, it's part of the story. So I don't want to be too black and white on it, but um, yeah. it certainly is true what you're saying. Mm -hmm. If you know that we are all going to die, then better be, have some fun while you are alive. Yes, uh, yes. And, and stick out your neck. And yeah. it's the first video I made this year with uh, some children exploded, making an explosion with a milk can. I, gosh, what's the word, an English word for it? <laughs> I, uh, I get it. I get the visual, an explosion of a milk yeah, can. So you have to put your, some uh, car A bomb? Uh, in it and uh, you, you you blow the the top of it uh -huh. off, and it gives a big bang but i said that's it this year we need to get loud we need to speak up we have to make noise we yep. have to show that we're there we cannot be pushed like little mm -hmm. boop, 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 in mm -hmm. the corner of the place we have to be present yes yes don't let the these last two years be in vain use them for exactly. For the work that you need to do for yourself you know and what that is you're gonna have to get silent and go within and find out what that is yes. but i i really hope that you know with today's talk that people who are maybe thinking more negatively or stressful or ang anxious about pandemic and are still dealing with a lot of it maybe they got some inspiration and information from our talk today to really help them kind of look at it in a new way approach it in a new way because they're still here you're still in the gift not everybody is. And yes. so you need to like honor that, especially yes. for those who've already passed. Yeah, very true. Beautifully said, Lisa. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, we're getting here toward, toward the end. Do you have any like final thoughts you want to share with the audience? Oh my gosh, that there's so much. Um, <laughs> well, one thing is that there are a lot of people who came to wisdom in the last few years and who indeed became loud. Mm. So they're findable. Just go and look for them. If you feel like, oh gosh, this is confusing. I need to find a lead, whatever. There are many people with inspirational videos on YouTube. I'm one of them, but uh, there are many, many more that share their wisdom that they've gathered over the years and allow yourself to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. and, and be uncertain for a while, enjoy the void, be surprised, mm -hmm. love the adventure and be courageous. Yes, so well said. And that's one thing too that I learned was, you know, better filters. I noticed yes. that I was watching way too much mainstream news. I will not be doing that going forward. Yes, I'll be informed and I'll get the highlights, but the amount that I was watching and let get into my brain and just like corrupt, I was just like, okay, too much of the news. And so I think, you know, filtering where you're having more of like the positive people like you and your channel, which I highly recommend everybody go check out, subscribe to Miriam's channel. Um, yes. Um, <laughs> because, like I said, you're exactly some of the voices that I needed to put in my head versus some of the other stuff that was out there that was more uplifting, enlightening, and, um, you know, just really good. Yeah, but it was an adventure for me too. I mean, yes. um, the, the restrictions made me go for a different yes. tool yes. as well. So uh, I we're never... both examples of the transformation. So yes, please use our are. examples for your own. <laughs> <laughs> and so beautiful to be able to meet via Zoom, via yes. the internet. 
So we have so many opportunities and tools also to connect. So please, yes, thank you. Yes, yes. Don't waste right. your gifts, people. Make sure you use them. <laughs> Good awesome, you. awesome. Good well, thank you, Miriam, for coming today and sharing all your wisdom. I will continue following you on, on uh, your YouTube and I'll check out your Telegram because I hear you yes, were able to yeah. go down some more corridors in the Telegram. So that'll be good. Yeah. yeah, I will share some channelings there as well. It will take some time, but uh, it will come. Okay, yeah. awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Lisa, for inviting me again. Yes, and thank you. Thank oh you. my gosh. There, thousand topics that we can discuss oh i know i know we'll see. we'll see we'll meet again sometime <laughs> sounds good sounds good yeah well if you guys like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be alerted to when the next video drops thanks for watching